Number 40, predict the valence electron molecular orbital configurations for the following and state whether they will be stable or unstable ions. Okie dokie. So, uh, before we actually find out the molecular orbital configuration, which is basically this mess down at the bottom, we first have to find out how many total valence electrons are we working with here. Well, they did tell us that we're dealing with sulfur. Now, sulfur on the periodic table, right, if we look on the periodic table, sulfur is in group 6A or 16, depending on what your periodic table says it is. It could just even say 6. But lucky number, here is the 6, because sulfur has 6 valence electrons. However, you got 2 of them. So if each sulfur has 6 and you got 2 sulfurs, We'll just times it by two, right? I have two sulfurs, and I'm going to times it by six. So I have a max of 12 valence electrons. I'll just put val as valence. But it won't be that easy, right? Because we have a charge. Now, keep in mind in chemistry, if you have plus charges, this means that you're more positive and you lost electrons. So plus two, or two plus, means that you lost two electrons. So from my 12, I just have to deduct two electrons to get a grand total of 10. So my total valence electrons now is 10 val electrons. And this is going to come in handy in a little bit. Now the next part is figuring out what type of configuration am I going to use. Now, for general chemistry, just know that there are two general um, molecular orbital configurations. The difference between here is because of sp orbital mixing, but that information and why that is is not really for a general chemistry class. It's more like for upper level chemistry when you get into college and you're taking like physical chemistry. But I just laid out the groundwork here to just show you that you just got to pick the right configuration depending on the group. Now, since we said that sulfur was in group A, we are over down here. So in this case, this is the framework that we're going to use to get our molecular orbital configuration. So I'm going to pull that one up. Now, the other ones can, get, can basically, you know, get erased away. So just pause the video if you need it. But I'm just going to get rid of all this now because we successfully picked the right general configuration. So this will be for S2, 2+. But now the thing is, is we just got to make this sulfur's own. Well, the first thing is that I did put little markers down here. I put blue highlighter and yellow highlighter because this is now specifically what S's and what P orbitals are we talking about. Now, your S's and P's always come from the period that sulfur is in. And once again, if we look on the periodic table, sulfur is in period three. So three for this is the magic number. So I have sigma, that's this symbol here, sigma bond and pi bonds, right? So I have a sigma 3s molecular orbital. I got a sigma 3s antibonding. Antibonding is basically the higher energy equivalent of the bonding one. So for every bonding, you will see that you will have the same notation, but just with the star on it. Same thing goes over here. Sigma 3px, that's your antibonding one. And then these two hook up in the middle. But threes all around. So 3py, 3pz, 3py, 3pz, and 3px. Okay. The next thing is now we just have to fill out our total number of valence electrons, which is 11, into this configuration. And just know that as you work from left to right, your energy is going to increase. So you got to start at the left and start dropping off electrons, and then you can go further and further on, dropping off your total number of valence electrons. And just know that for every configuration, right, for every molecular orbital, you only have a max of two electrons. So for the first one, well, this is one molecular orbital, I'm only allowed to drop in two electrons. But I need a total of 10, so I'm just going to keep going. The next one is the antibonding. That's the next one in energy. This would be two. Now I have four electrons, which is not 10, so I'm going to keep going. 
the next one, that's just a um, single molecular orbital, that's two again. Still didn't reach the 10, so we keep going. Now this one, it, there's two molecular orbitals that are grouped together because these are the same energy. Two electrons max in this one and two electrons max in this one, which means that this can technically hold a max of four electrons. And let's just put in the total number and let's just see if we get 10, right? Two, four, six, six plus four is 10. So we have no more electrons. So basically there would be zero in this molecular orbitals and there would be zero in that one as well. Now to clean this up, this would be the general, all of your molecular orbitals, but you only write up until the last one that has actual electrons on it. So the rest of this gets cut, unfortunately. Bye-bye, we don't have to say it. And now this is the valence electron molecular orbital configuration. Now from this information, we have to figure out, is this a stable or an unstable ion? And basically, if, if they're asking for molecular orbital configurations and then they're asking for stability, they basically want you to find the bond order because the bond order number will tell you if um, you will actually form a bond. Will you form a single bond? Will you form a double bond? Or will you form a bond at all? Well, let's figure it out. Formula for bond order is this. It's pretty simple. It's just two things subtracted by each other divided by two. So bond order is your total number of bonding electrons minus your antibonding divided by two. So let's just write this out. Bond order is going to be something minus something else divided by two. We now just need to know what is going on in here. The easiest one to figure out first is your antibonding. The antibonding, remember, is always the one that has the stars. So if your molecular orbital has a star in it, that goes for the antibonding. And it seems like here there's only one star that I see, right? These other guys, they don't have any stars in the upper right-hand corners. So there's two antibonding electrons. So this number would be a two. So I'll put a two over here. Now let's do the bonding. The bonding is all the ones that don't have a star. So I got two electrons from this one two electrons from this one, and four total electrons from these. So two, four, four plus four is eight. So I have eight bonding electrons. Now all we gotta do is just do the math, right? Eight minus two is six, right? Yeah, eight minus two is six divided by two is three. So we got a bond order equal to three. And what this means is you could think of it in terms of a line, right? If you got a bond order of three, that basically means you got three lines between the two sulfurs. This would say that this is a triple bond. Because the triple bond has one, two, three lines, three as the bond order. Now, would this be stable or unstable? Well, did we actually make a bond here? Yeah, we actually got a number. We, we got a triple bond. So this molecule would be a stable ion. Just to put it into perspective, a unstable ion is when your bond order would be zero, right? If your number is zero, that means you would not form any bond, which means that generally it would be an unstable ion. But in this case, we got a stable ion. And hopefully that helps. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers, and it's all because of you guys. So thank you so much for all your support, and I look forward to talking to you in later lessons. Bye-bye.